Hello, I'm Bill Peek. I'm going to be your guide today when we talk about dynamic vehicle controls as it's used on cars, light trucks, and yes, even tractor trailer applications. Now, this program was developed by Dr. Norman Nall and myself, Bill Peek. Let's take a minute to go back in history a little bit and tell you a few things. Dynamic vehicle controls are going to utilize ABS brake systems with special sensors. We've all seen ABS brakes, been around 20 years, and we've all seen our fair failures. Quite often, we have not been that good at diagnosing them. So in this program, what we're telling you, you're going to have to go beyond just ABS. And ABS was used for some specialized functions. Electronic brake force distribution, we'll talk more about it later, but it looks at the automatically setting the balance between front and rear brake forces. Power-assisted emergency braking. The newer vehicles, when you hit your pedal quickly, will actually apply more pressure than you're generating with your foot while maintaining proper adhesion to the road, maximum traction, maximum control. We're going to break that down very finely. There's probably some surprises for you in this. Now, the following systems, part of our dynamic vehicle controls and specialized controls, are going to be things that function without the brake pedal being pressed. Now we're going into dynamic vehicle controls. That means the vehicle is going to be controlling things without the operator having to do any action. The simplest one everybody's heard of, traction control. It applies the brake slightly to the wheel that's losing traction. Stability control is the big news. And tell you how it's going to work and what the sensor voltage is going to look like to make this work. Because in, this, in the scan data for the ABS system, you will find a number of specialized sensors. And we're going to tell you what they should be reading. We're going to talk about brake by wire, where the car automatically brings up its brakes. I'm sure you've all seen the advertisements about the man who says, I didn't see the impending collision, but my car did and automatically applied the brakes. This is called city driving collision avoidance. All of these systems are going to utilize ABS system and components as part of a system to improve vehicle safety. Now let's talk about where ABS came from. It's our very first safety improvement. It was introduced to improve control doing braking where brake force exceeded available traction. We all think it locked and unlocked brakes to keep you from skidding. We're going to go beyond that and tell you how to really work. Let's spend some time talking about the vehicle safety improvements that are a result of dynamic vehicle controls. Now, the cars have been studied in Europe, Australia, Asia, and the United States. Let's say North America. What they found is that single car accidents were reduced by 41% on vehicles that had stability control. Dynamic vehicle control, we'll talk about all the different names, but let's understand that this is going to improve control. SUVs, studies have proven that rollovers were reduced by 67%. And tractor-trailer truck loss of control was reduced by 66%. That's two-thirds of the accidents in these trucks and tractor-trailers were reduced by having stability control. These systems apply specific brakes on wheels or axles without the driver pressing the brake pedal. These are what we call them dynamic. ABX brakes were the first electronic brake control system. They work when the driver presses on the brakes and the loss of control is likely. We don't wait for it to happen. We're going to discuss that in more detail later. Now, the governments in the U.S. and Europe, along with some Asian countries, are going to require that all vehicles be equipped with stability control by 2012 model year. In fact, that means all vehicles that are introduced from this date forward worldwide are going to have to have vehicle stability control. That's how important this is. And we have plenty of vehicles out there that already have this system. Now, the improvements are going to require yaw. And we're going to talk about and define yaw for you. There's yaw sensors and steering wheel sensors. They're going to provide added information that controls braking for electronic stability control to give us these improvements that reduce accidents. And it's an important thing in the future. Integrated electronically controlled brakes, electronic throttle control, yaw measurements, steering angle position, 
are going to form a complete system we call dynamic vehicle control. We named it dynamic vehicle control because there's just too many names thrown around. Now the tractor trailers have been done, have been added. We've added this to this program because so many of our fleets have to repair not only passenger cars and light trucks, ABS on dump trucks, garbage trucks, and tractor trailers. Not all systems have steering on the trucks. We call what we're going to discuss our full stability control, which will have yaw and steering information going to ABS computers. Let's take a look at something. Bendix did a rollover test. They used trailers with outriggers to keep the trailer from rolling over on a test truck. I want to share with you what it looks like. This truck, without electronic stability control, had a rollover incident at 24 miles an hour. Now, in their definition, any trailer that lands on the outrigger like that is equivalent to a rollover in actual practice on the field. Let's see what happens when we add stability control, same proving grounds, same truck, same outriggers. All we're going to do is add stability control. The full ESC system that introduced, included steering angle and throttle controls along with yaw completed the lane change maneuver we saw earlier without tipping. The difference is it's going 16 miles an hour faster, 40 miles an hour with full stability control, no tipping, not even wheel lift. The only difference in these two vehicles same weight, same load, same surface, just to build a control. By applying brakes strategically, this is the kind of improvement that can be obtained. Let's take just a minute to define electronic stability control and how it works. The brakes are activated without driver input. The brake ECU, and it can be called brake ECU, skid ECU, again, a number of names, but it's going to determine which wheels to use to prevent a loss of control. And prevent may be a strong word, maybe reduce would be more appropriate. But ABS and electronic throttles are key elements to electronic stability. One of the things in trucks and cars and SUVs that improves the stability control is also the ability to reduce the vehicle to speed by controlling the throttle. We lump all this together and call it dynamic vehicle control to indicate it's bigger than just a couple new sensors on the car. Just to remind you again, SUVs currently have a 100% implementation of electronic stability because of a 56% reduction when vehicle crashes when the ESV was installed. Rollovers were induced by, reduced by 67%. We're going to start by talking about ABS because it's the first part of the system we need to understand we are going to do an in-depth study of ABS so we can understand locking and unlocking the brakes. We're going to go into detail analysis of the hydraulic controls and the timing of events all necessary for ABS, which are going to be very similar to what we're going to have to do for electronic stability. Then we're going to do a more advanced study of the controls, but first we have to understand ABS. Brake systems with ABS can be categorized by the number of component configurations. We can simply say, hey, here's the components that make one up. This is one of the confusing part of the nomenclature. There's so many ways of identifying these systems. But integral systems are combined electro-hydraulic units with a master cylinder and brake cylinder. That was early on, utilized in the Tevis in 8593, the Bendix in 8991. All of this goes way back in history and talks about it. Now we start looking at truck air brakes for tractors and air brakes for trailers. We see some strange numbers like 4S, 4M. Let's start talking about those. Let's talk about tractor trailer designations. They're identified by the number of speed sensors. The first number and letter, S, tells you how many speed sensors are used. The M is the brake pressure modulators. How many of those are used? Let's look at some bigger configurations. 4S, 4M has four speed sensors and four pressure modulators. 6S, 6M has six speed sensors and six pressure modulators. And a different variation is 6S, 5M 
has six sensors and five pressure modulators. One modulator controls an axle instead of individual wheel sets on a tractor trailer. For passenger cars, the non-integral systems, which are our most common, have a master cylinder and brake poster separate from the electro-hydraulic unit. It is not an easily serviceable thing. They can be rebuilt, but before you condemn this pricey unit, you must be able to identify and confirm this is the cause of your code or system malfunction. That's what we're focusing on, giving you the diagnostics to understand this. Now, the other ways of doing this is we can categorize them on passenger cars and light trucks by the number of wheels or axles controlled. And we go back, rear wheels only. It was early on the pickups way back when. It uh, individual front wheel controls, two channels for both front wheels and one channel in the back called a three-channel system. We'll talk a little more about this three-channel a little later. But in this presentation, we're going to spend most of our time talking about where all the wheels have separate controls. It's called a four-channel system. This is the configuration that provides the control needed for electronic stability control. And it's also used on newer vehicles. But having said that, we don't want to ignore the three-channel system because the three-channel system was used on light trucks mainly. It gave us something that made it unique and made it a three-channel instead of a four-channel is the rear axles had one pressure control, one speed control. The two front axles had individual pressure controls and individual speed controls. It really helped us with steering control because 70% or so of the braking comes from the front wheels. And we have very minor braking in the rear, on particularly on a pickup truck. But the four channel, all wheel, whatever you want to call it, gave us our interlock protection with floor speed sensors, four fluid pressure channels. We had two pressure channels for the front, two for the rear. Each wheel was independently checked for speed and we control the brake. This is the modern configuration needed for dynamic vehicle control. Now let's talk about how all these things are going to work. They're going to work by controlling brake pressure to specific wheels to help maintain good directional control. Two different set of reasons for controlling it. We'll talk about that. But we're going to cover a detailed description and diagnostics for each component for the hydraulic and the air brake systems. They work very similar. Let's talk about individual wheel components. The basis for either ESC or ABS is the control of pressure applied to individual brakes. The first issue is how does the electronics determine which axle or axles require brake pressure changes. Now, if we have electronic stability control, ESC will apply brake pressure to selected wheels when loss of control is likely. This is a decision made by the, by the ECU, not the driver. ABS will hold or reduce brake pressure to specific wheels to reduce sl wheel slip during braking. The difference is a computer made the decision in ESC and the ABS was assisting the driver during braking. So the first issue with all of this electronics is do we have a good B plus supply, good ground, and all the fuses and everything are in good shape. Now, service problems with blown fuses, poor connections, are some of the common failures that can't be overlooked. We have this schematic that we've color-coded for you. Let's break it down and look at it. We have two test points here for B+. We're going to make sure B plus reaches the contacts for each one of our relays. Notice that it's coming from a set of fuses down here. All of this red is B+. Plus. It has to be present all along. And we have to have B plus to close the relay coming from the skid control ECU on this Toyota. So you notice that when you get a schematic like this, you break down the details of where everything's happening. If you have a problem with a relay not energizing, it's dealing with the skid control ECU. You have to go check that out. But notice over here we have ground on the other side. In this particular case, ground is provided by the skid control ECU for the coil on the relays. Also going to the ECU is scan data showing that power has arrived at the brake actuator. Now with this brake actuator we show grounds over here in green. All the grounds on the skid control ECU and the brakes have to be working properly and we need to go check all of that. 